Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out big news. And today we got massive, two pieces of massive news to talk about with Darren Trusdell, Chairman and CEO of Now Vertical, trades in Canada, the stock symbol NOW for our friends in the US, NOWVF. For those who are new to the story, because you see this massive headline saying, who are these guys? First thing you got to know is the big data market is approximately 150 to $200 billion market and growing at a torrid pace for obvious reasons. Now Vertical is a big data vertical intelligence software and services company. We know that's a mouthful. But what they essentially do is they help the world's biggest companies, including Fortune 500, Tier 1 clients, make smarter decisions with all that data they just can't consume and analyze in a timely manner. More than just lip service, some of the clients, enterprise side, Ford, Santander, GE Healthcare. On the media side, Netflix, Lionsgate, uh, Amazon, Prime, sorry, Apple, HBO, Universal, the list goes on and on. And the numbers, 2021 revenue, $3.2 million, up 2,000% year over year. But more importantly, their current pro forma, 2021 adjusted revenue as of April 6th, because they've made acquisitions now that they want to make sure are starting to get factored in, $30.5 million. That's nearly 10 times since May 24th. Darren, welcome back, my friend. Thanks, George, and thanks for uh, sharing our numbers. I'm hey, well, look, they're great numbers. We got to be happy, and I love the client pace too. Before we get to the details, how happy are you with the with these financial results, and how happy should the shareholders be that you guys are delivering? Well, we we couldn't be happier. We've uh, we've executed our program start to finish from zero to you know twenty one performa revenue of thirty plus million dollars in sixteen months. You know, that's uh, as accelerated of a, of a story as you can get. And that's just the beginning. You know, we're, we're executing through 22 with both organically and inorganically now, too. You know, I think that's a, you know, a new exciting, you know, addition to the story. You know, our, we take our group from 21 to where we're going in 22. There's over 30 percent organic growth in what we're doing on a baseline um, there. So this is this is an explosive story. We've got the right team. We've got the right customers. We've got the right pieces. We've got more to do, um, but we're we're doing everything we said we were going to do and more. Companies usually are really great when it comes to growth at one thing, either organic or M and A, but usually very difficult to do both because when you're acquiring George Com and ABC Big Data, you need a lot of time. Most companies need a lot of time just to absorb them, get the cultures right, uh, legacy systems, hook them up. It takes off. But you guys are already experiencing organic growth while you're still in the m a cycle what does that say about your team that you guys are able to provide that double bang or growth like that so the the businesses we're acquiring you know all have growth factors of their own which is an important part of our you know of our qualification and, and process we go through we you know we don't want to buy flat or declining businesses um so it says a lot about the products or the teams together the, the real strategy we have, though, is to marry these, you know, underpriced, underscale software companies with a service, managed services apparatus globally. And that's where we're really getting the, the, the long term upside here. And, and frankly, that's not even factored into what we're doing. So this growth is just kind of part of our purchases. The synergy side, which is completely additional um, we're not expecting to really, you know, see that materialize until later this year going into next year. So there's still another wave of additional organic growth to come, but we're staying uh, acquisitive through this year too, because we want to get to a certain revenue scale. And we've been talking about this since inception, which is to get to north of a hundred million. Um, and that gives us enough scale um, to matter, not just in our customer context, it's important in our commercial side of our business, but it's really important in the capital market side because we're we're trying to build a true competitor to the to the large cap names in our space, and we need to get to that scale. And, and you know, a big part of this is I don't know, I don't know if a lot of people realize this is credibility because what does it say about you guys? Look, Agorcom is a private company. If someone wants to acquire us, you know, we would be so careful because we've grown this thing and it's our baby. You know, we don't you don't want to just hand it off to anybody. And you guys are acquiring world-class companies like Allegiant. We'll talk about that in a second, but what does that say to the market? What should that say to your shareholders? The fact that so many great companies are saying, okay, let's get, let's, let's become part of the now vertical team. 
Well, we've, we've started with a platform with two businesses that we acquired. That's what we took public. And then we kept the, the train moving down the track. And there's been eight total acquisitions to date. And every acquisition gets you know, more impactful, bigger revenue, bigger profit opportunities as we go. Um, so what, what it's saying to the market is here's a platform for you as an independent, small, mid-sized business to become part of something bigger, make a bigger contribution, be parts of bigger client assignments, um, expand your technology into new spaces, new use cases. All those things check the box for a founder who is stuck at a certain size and, and wants to grow and be part of something bigger. It's a, you know, and, and the best consolidators in the world historically have used that methodology and it works really well. From the investor perspective, I think what, what gets sort of lost, you know, on the investor is we've done this, we've only raised net of fees around $20 million uh, in our history and acquired eight companies. And that's a really important distinction. We've, we've been extremely strong capital allocators of all the eight transactions we've done. We've bought everything, including future earnout considerations, um, which are completely performance-based for a 6X EBITDA multiple. So, you, in you know, tech, we're outperforming. That's cheap, that's cheap it's and not, growing tech. It's not just cheap. What it is, is it's strong capital allocation. So if I'm an investor, we are proving that your dollar into now vertical is a strong uh, upside opportunity for the future. And including our organic growth on top of that, it's, you know, the next couple of years is going to be substantial upside for our shareholders, we believe. It also tells me, I'm going to read between the lines here, Darren, that the, the, uh, the entrepreneurs, the founders of the companies you're acquiring are really smart, really strategic team players. What I mean then by that is I'll, I'll use the analogy of sports. If George is the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys and I get a $50 million contract, that's great for me, but there's just not enough money and resources left over to build out a championship team. So that's why the likes of Tom Brady take lower, lower salaries in order to have more resources to bring on more team members and win championships. So is that what's going on with you guys? I mean, you're finding the right people to say, yeah, we probably maybe get more if we try to go public on our own or try to really get aggressive, but we want to be part of a, a better team. And what kind of confidence should that give everybody that, man, you guys are potentially building a Super Bowl team? So, you know, we're, we're clearly, I believe, you know, some of the best, you know, identifiers of great talent. You know, we're finding that in the company. It's a critical element of what we look for from the founders down through their management team and core people. What we're really doing in our acquisition process is we typically use a little bit of cash and we use stock in our transactions. And what the stock does is align everybody to the mission, which is one team, one go to market, one, you know, performance metric, which ultimately ends up being our stock price. And long term, that's what we want everyone, you know, thinking. And I think another thing that you know, is is hard to communicate to our shareholders and our investors that they should understand is our targets that have taken stock are taking it at a premium to market. You know, we've had one in right. the fall take, you know, take it, you know, usually the floor has been a dollar US. So call it a dollar 26, you know, when our, we're out here trading 80, 90 cents. So like that just shows the power of the platform we're building and why it matters. And it, and it certainly matters to our companies that we've acquired. So when that catches up, we think, you know, we're going to be able to bring the upside to our, our founder partners who've sold us their businesses. And that's an important responsibility that we take on. What happens when you get to the $100 million mark, that goal that you have? The obvious one that people think about shareholders is, oh, they'll uplist to the NASDAQ and things like that, which is, which is very possible. But what happens to the business at that point? Do you just reach a different level of, uh, of status within the big data industry? I mean, you've already got unbelievable clients. I don't know how much better your status gets, get, but what does that yeah. do for the company big picture when you get to the $100 million mark? It, 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 I wouldn't say status is the right word, world, uh, word sorry. What, what it does for us is some of our larger competitors. So in the US market, there's a company called C3.ai. Um, I know them. They, yeah, they are about a, just over a $200 million revenue business. So it puts us in the ballpark with our much, much larger market cap scale competitors. 
And obviously at that scale, we believe we can enter the US capital markets in a, in a, in a much more successful way. We don't want to, our story is too good, too premium to be slogging it out in junior markets for our whole life. So we want to build and, and launch in the right way to provide the best upside for our shareholders. And it's not just your size, right? It's your tech. I mean, big data, uh, a lot of people, a lot of shareholders at home probably hear big data and they, they hear it all the time. But the fact of the matter is, it's almost the, the double-edged sword. The bigger Georgecom gets, we're happy. But now we have a flood of data coming in at a tidal wave pace and we don't know how to manage it fast enough. You guys seem to be really at the really at the at the at the upper echelon of that what we've already had many many sales over our you know company's history and our private company's history of selling major enterprise software and we've been very successful with that and continue to be you know now it's a 40 million dollar uh usd run rate business for 22 estimated um so we, we've been successful with that we just want to keep moving that uh, moving that needle up, 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 you know, not just selling new business in, which is critical to our company, but cross-selling our existing customers into the new products and new technologies we're buying and building. Very important. And that's where there's a ton of additional upside in our story that if we're not even factoring into the, to the financial picture yet for our, for our shareholders. Yeah. And more than just talk, a lot of people like to use synergy, but it's very hard to deliver if you're already at 30% organic growth with the with the company you've acquired, that's fantastic. I know you're in a rush because you're a busy guy. You're doing multiple deals. Last question for you is going to be on Allegiant. I mean, we've all seen the numbers. So we know that, you know, major leading U.S. defense contractor with a 2025, up to 2025 backlog of $70 million. How big and how important is this acquisition? And, uh, and how much bigger do you think it gets now that's inside the now uh, umbrella? It's a really, really important acquisition because government spaces have been something we've been working in since our inception. Um, some of the companies we've acquired since their inception. Allegiant fortifies our backlog with $70 million over the next, you know, three-ish years. That's 20 plus million dollars, 25, you know, $23 million a year of additional revenue roughly coming into the group contracted. So it gives us a lot of, uh, a lot of bench strength or, you know, kind of, a, a large basket in the government business to build upon. But the real strategy is to turn that 70 into a much larger number through yeah. moving our soft through our software assets into those existing government spaces and contracts. So that's what the work every day right now is to bring our now privacy business, which is governance, bring our, our, our latest acquisition on uh, uh, Exoner, which brought us a, a product called Reveal, bringing that into spaces, which is all data security oriented. There is an endless opportunity right now, given our macro and socioeconomic climate or geopolitical climate, sorry, in the world of security and governance risk. And we have the best products in the market for that. Yeah. And you guys are hitting out of the park on, on all fronts, Darren. I want to congratulate you. Before we sign off, maybe last words, for, last words to you for your shareholders, what you want them to really take from all this outside of the obvious, which is you guys are kicking ass, but you know, what else do you want to maybe convey to them? I think, uh, thank you for the support. You know, we, we spent a lot of time with our shareholders and social media directly with relationships. We are a shareholder driven company. We are building a model to create returns and compound for our shareholders. And that's how we we've architected this from day one. So we, uh, you know, we hope you stick with our story and, and, you know, come along for the, for the ride for the long term. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for short term shareholders. Well, you're definitely building a long term case. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. We don't have to sit here and talk or we don't have to convince the numbers speak for themselves. Now, the investment community has to make their own decisions. And unfortunately, we can't tell them what to do. But, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. Darren, thanks for being with us. I uh, can't wait thanks, to have sir. you back. And I, I got a feeling we, you're going to have you back a lot more often. Uh, given how fast things are accelerating. It's a busy, it's going to be a busy year. To everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Darren Truesdale, he's chairman CEO of Now Vertical Group, trades in Canada, the stock symbol now. And for our friends in the US, Now VF. For those new to the story, start your due diligence on Agoracom by getting to come to his profile page because no big data and this kind of growth is new to a lot of you. Once you got that thousand foot overview and you're really comfortable, then link over to the company's website to your deep dive due diligence 
And hopefully today, today you discovered your next great small cap company. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.